this morning because we're using instant coffee and instant coffee is a little bit lanky. I have um, gotten a bit creative. I have condensed milk and coconut milk and it's really good actually. It makes instant Nescafe taste almost bearable. So um, cheers. So fast, and I was gonna take a trip in the world, but I go love you. Yeah, I'm gonna love you. I'm gonna love you, baby. Cross my heart and hope to die. And I have to say that. You know, during the day, this place is just as spectacular as now, but it is about ten times as manic with all the day trippers from Phuket and everywhere. But in the evening and in the morning, in the early morning, it is just beautiful, and I can see all these little long tail boats, which are presumably local fishermen, just going about their morning business. And you know, it kind of you, you feel like you could literally be in the middle of some really isolated island group, not 10 miles away from Phuket, which is probably one of the most famous tropical islands in the world. It really is very beautiful and very serene. We considered ourselves truly privileged to have been able to have this anchorage to ourselves for the whole evening. The beauty of the sunset, the amazing sunrise, all added to the complete sense of awe that we felt as we looked out onto these limestone cliffs. But dawn in Thailand, as with many parts of Asia and many parts of the world, brings back the fishermen and the sound of long tail boats. And so after breakfast, we took a quick dip off the back of the boat. The water was clear, it was warm and refreshing. Eventually, however, it was time to leave. Our weather forecast showed that we had a good sailing breeze. We also knew that we had some fantastic eyeball navigation, which was gonna make it easy, and we could finally get those sails up. So it was time to leave our anchorage underneath the limestone cliff get the sail out of the sail bag, get the boat prepared to sail, get the lines ready and flaked, do our final safety checks, and then, once we've done all that, head to the helm, start the engine, raise the anchor, and off we go. It's fair to say that the purchase system on the main Halyard was a little stiff. I was a little bit out of practice, but eventually, with a lot of huffing and puffing and maybe a bit of cussing, the mainsail was up and well set. We got the luff tension exactly where we wanted it, and so, with that, headed off under full main, full Genoa, off to our next destination.
Good morning, Sunny Ka, Sunny Ka from amazing and sunny Thailand. We are heading towards Chicken Island today. And uh, what I would say, if you can hear me over this wind noise, is that it's the first day we've actually managed to get the sails up, which is pretty awesome. So the boat is trotting along at four knots um, under Jib and Main. We're towing the dinghy. That's a little uh, sound you can hear in the background. It is, and I've said this probably quite a lot, stunningly, stunningly beautiful out here. It is invariably the prettiest and uh, most amazing sailing on we've ever we've ever been to. Um, I can't believe in all these years of sailing and visiting Thailand we never managed to equate that one and the other go together quite well. So here we are it is about oh it's about 10 o'clock in the morning it is about 29 degrees Celsius which is Ooh, high 80s I think uh, in Fahrenheit. We have uh, a short passage today. Uh, we hopefully we're meeting some friends later for uh, a couple of beers, uh, friends that you may know um, from the internet and uh, yeah, we'll take it from there. So let me know it's a true wind and uh, we'll just see how it all goes. So under Fort Main and Genoa we headed off to our next anchorage a secluded and well-protected anchorage off Koh Yao Noi. We knew that the wind was going to shift overnight from west to north. There was some heavy weather coming in and we wanted a well-protected anchorage. The anchorage also had some uncharted rocks, so we chose a safe spot away from other boats, away from the uncharted areas and dropped the mainsail. As we motored carefully into the anchorage, it was strange to think that the weather forecast predicted some really heavy rain and winds. However, we've been caught out like this before. If the weather says it's going to change, you find cover and get the anchor in. The sky was turning black from the west and the wind was starting to freshen. We knew that there was going to be a heavy, heavy downpour. So with Teresa at the helm using our well-crafted set of hand signals for depth, we nosed our way into the anchorage. I stayed on the bow with the windless control, but also looking out for obstacles or submerged hazards. It's pretty easy to hit something in waters that are uncharted like this. But once we found a safe spot, motored around, we dropped the anchor, and within about 10 minutes, Melinda Jane was sat, bobbing around, very calm and serene, in an otherwise peaceful anchorage. Arriving in a new location and venturing ashore for the first time is one of the things we love most about sailing. So it was with huge amounts of excitement that we prepared the dinghy. We had the gash bag to take with us and also lots of things like flip-flops and cameras. But while I prepared the dinghy and Teresa closed the boat up, we looked to the clouds blackening in the horizon and prepared ourselves for what was going to be a very wet evening. Get it on the plane, it'll make it a smoother ride If you couldn't understand what I was saying, I was talking about raising the drive leg on the outboard. If you raise the leg a little bit into its slightly upward position, it means that the propeller is up and out of the way. And if you do hit a rock, it will hit the hull of the dinghy before it hits your prop, which means that you don't shatter the cotter pin and it means that you keep your propeller. The other thing that our tender had was a set of dolly wheels. Now we have never had these before, but after using them once, I can absolutely guarantee you that Ruby Rose 2 and the tender to Ruby Rose 2 will have a set of dolly wheels. Absolutely fantastic for pulling a dinghy up a beach, especially where there is gonna be a variance in tide height and you may come back 
after a few hours away to find that your dinghy has floated off. So it allows you to get the dinghy a lot further up the beach with a lot less huffing and puffing. And so with Princess Teresa sat in the dinghy giving oh so valuable instruction to me as I hauled the dinghy over the rocks, we hauled it up the beach, finally found a tree to tie the dinghy to which wasn't going to float away and then went to try and find something to eat. We're going over the rocks. So ashore again, uh, one thing that we've just learned, actually this charter, it kind of is, we've learned so much. You know when you think you know things and then you realize that actually you don't know that much at all, but there's so many things that are like, oh yeah, this is, we're gonna have to do this. So dolly wheels, we are definitely getting dolly wheels in our next dinghy, uh, absolutely invaluable. Anyway, so we are off to try and see what the local facilities are. There seem to be two or three bars, some cats, a laundromat, and hopefully there'll be a little shop that we can get some rice. Yeah, it'd be, be for this, uh, find a massage parlor. And a massage parlor. <laughs> Happy ending all round. <laughs> and so our first task of the day after dumping our gash bag was to try and find some rice, some food, some fruit, something to have for dinner in the evening. Once we'd done that, we'd probably try and find a bar to have our sundowner. So we've managed to secure what? A hand of bananas. A hand of bananas. And two mangoes. And two mangoes. So just no rice. We've not found any like seven eleven or anything. Or even a shop that sells rice. We had. A, that, yeah. Do you know what? I've never seen a shop so poorly equipped. And we've been to some places in the Caribbean that had nothing. There's a a, a building that could be loosely called a shop, perhaps, but it had like about I don't know three rows and maybe like four items. Of which most of those items were tin sardines. Yeah, and like a few things were washing, washing up with them. Your dad'll be happy though, your dad loves the old sardine, <laughs> doesn't he? But that's okay, we've got those bunches around here so we can, uh, we can eat around here tonight. Um, well look, we've got noodles, bananas and mango. We've got loads of food, it's oh, just yeah. like we're missing rice because we bought rice but it had weevils in it. Yeah, the so. rice, was, rice was contaminated. I still have no problem eating, eating weevil rice. I don't know, I feel like we could do better than that. Mm. Alright, I'm with and so we started our walk back along the beach. We had our bag of fruit for dinner, we had some prawns left, and we could see and feel that the weather was about to change. So before the skies opened, we headed off to a tiki bar that we had spotted at the other end of the beach. All those slightly dated techno music is not something that I would normally listen to when having our sundowners. This seemed oh so apt. The skies opened, the sound of the rain on the tin roof was like gunshots going off. The rain fizzed off the light switches and we sat in the warm and the dry with our cold beers. Again, it's not everyone's cup of tea, but for us a poorly populated bar with cold beer, flickering lights, and wooden furniture is the absolutely best place to be while we sat and watched the deluge washing the mud down the road. There is honestly no other place we would have rather have been at the time. This was truly turning in to one of our best trips ever. So join us for our next episodes as we finally catch up with our friends. They take us on an adventure, try to drown us, and then buy us a beer. Now that is what you call a good day out. We also give you our thoughts on sailing Thailand and unfortunately get ourselves into a spot of bother.
So for our views on Catamaran versus Monohull life, our thoughts on Thailand and sailing in Thailand, as well as just our adventures as we head across Thailand, feel free to subscribe to our channel, click that like button, and if you haven't already done so, click that notification bell. See you again soon.